When you're configuring your wireless network, there's a number of options that you should consider. One is something called an SSID management. SSID stands for Service Set Identifier. And this is usually a name that we assign to what this wireless network is. This is the accounting wireless network. This is the public wireless network. Sometimes you'll see the wireless access points configured with their defaults, like Linksys and Default and Netgear. That's You know there that somebody has not done much configuration of their wireless access point. In fact, it may be a security issue because you know they're using the default settings for everything. You should probably change your SSID to something that's not as obvious as Linksys or default. And maybe change it to something that's more specific to its functionality. Some people prefer making it a name that has nothing to do with its functionality, just as yet another security methodology. Another option that you can change is something called SSID broadcasting. If you've ever used a wireless device and a laptop, a mobile device, and you've said, find the wireless networks that are out there, it's given you a big list. And it's given you that list because the wireless access points out there are configured to automatically broadcast themselves out to everybody who happens to be out there. Specifically so, you would be able to find them easily. But if you don't want your wireless access point to be listed in those, you can always disable the wireless access broadcasting, the SSID broadcast. Now, this is not security. This does not prevent anyone from then trying to get into your access point. It only makes it a little more obscure. It only hides it in only just a little bit. Somebody who's really knowledgeable can still find it out there. The idea of using obscurity should not be considered a way to provide security. There is no security through obscurity. So keep that in mind when you're configuring some of these things that just because you hide it doesn't necessarily make it more secure. A way to implement more of access control on a wireless access point is through something called MAC filtering. MAC is media access control and is the hardware address of your Ethernet, wireless Ethernet cards. So every network card on anybody's network has a MAC address. It has a hardware address associated with it. And at a very fundamental level, this is the way that our networks communicate to each other is over that physical hardware address. If you put into your access point, I will only allow access to my network from these specific MAC addresses. You're really tightening down the access that you can have into your wireless network. So if you didn't want the neighbors to access your wireless network, you didn't want anybody walking into your house or going near your home or your office to be able to get onto your wireless network, you can limit that access so that no one can get on unless you specifically administratively add their MAC address into your access point. So this is very, very specific access control. Now, this is not security. You'll notice I've used the term access control. That does not equate to being completely secure. It's very easy to find what other devices might be on a wireless network because MAC addresses are not encrypted. So I could sit outside your office. I could sniff the air. I could capture packets across a wireless network. I could see what MAC addresses are there. And I could come back later on at night, configure my workstation to have the same MAC address as a device that's inside of your network. And now I've gotten around your filter. So a filter is really there for a convenience sake to prevent the people who don't know any better from getting on your network. You should not consider it to be something that provides you with a high level of security. Most access points can also be configured to assign IP addresses out there. So you don't have to configure everybody's wireless workstation with a specific IP address. You can simply tell your wireless access point, hand out the IP addresses automatically through something called DHCP. It allows you to automatically send that out. Some people will choose not to use DHCP, and they will manually assign IP addresses. And they might assign it on some very obscure ranges in the hopes that if somebody showed up and didn't know your IP addressing scheme, they would not be able to get on your wireless network. If it's an unencrypted network, I can very, very easily perform a packet capture of the wireless network and see the IP addresses that are in use. It's, if it's an encrypted network, then it's harder to see that information. You won't be able to get down to that level. If somebody breaks your encryption, again, they will be able to see the IP addresses. So again, you shouldn't consider having manual or automatic IP addressing to be a security issue just because you're trying to make something more obscure. You should use it more as an administrative tool to be able to get people onto the network and not onto the network. If you really want to provide security on a wireless network, it must be related to the encryption type, not MAC address filtering, not SSID broadcast, and certainly not IP addressing. 
Let's review what we've learned about these wireless networks. Our first question is, what wireless networking standard supports speeds up to 600 megabits per second? Well, that sounds something that's relatively new, and it is. It is 802.11 in wireless networks. The next question, which wireless network encryption method is the most secure? We've talked about two encryption types, remember, today. One is WEP, and one is WPA. Which one was the most secure? It was WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access. In fact, you might even want to say WPA2 if you really wanted to be specific about the most protected wireless encryption methodology that's available today. And which wireless option can hide the name of the access point? And hide is in quotes there because you're not really hidden, are you? It is the SSID broadcast suppression that you can configure inside of your wireless access point. Well, that covers almost everything now on our section four of our CompTIA exam. We're all the way through this chapter where we have looked at wireless networking types, all kind types of cabling, and everything in between. If you want to see any of our a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website, 3aplus.com.